Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police are investigating a crime scene that they say is several blocks long. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you if anyone was hurt. Let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 76 degrees out there right now. Whew, that humidity was no joke yesterday. What is it going to be like today? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday. It is September 18th. Happy Sunday. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. Did you end up leaving the house yesterday? I did. I made a huge mistake and decided to go. Um, my husband plays disc golf. We went to... Um, Universal City. They have okay. a great disc golf course there. However, we went at noon. Mm. And I thought, oh, it's shaded most. No, it was... Stripping ooh. sweat. It was brutal. And I was just like, yeah. I sat here all morning and listened to Sarah, <laughs> but nothing act I was just like, I can do this. It was brutal, Sarah. Hey, as, as long as you guys brought some water. Brought some water? Yes, it, 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 was, it wasn't enough. <laughs> okay, so it's a long pause The moment there. pause, I was like, yeah. ooh. But yeah, today is going to look a lot similar to yesterday, almost a carbon copy too, guys, so be prepared for the humidity, Sarah. All right, outside right now, we've got some clouds out there, 77 degrees, but again, dew points are pretty high in the low 70s. It already feels like it's a couple degrees warmer than what thermometer reads, and we've had a steady south wind yesterday that it's increased the humidity too, uh, so all of us waking up with very humid conditions out there this morning. Now today, although it's cloudy now, we're quickly going to see the skies clear by noon. We'll be at 87 degrees, 95 for the high temperature, but that heat index will be near 100. And a lot like yesterday, a couple of coastal showers are possible, but it's going to be pretty dry in San Antonio over the next several days. We'll talk about our rainfall deficit, how it's been a very dry year for us, and how some parts around the country are dealing with some flooding rains because of Tropical Storm Fiona. I'll have those details for you coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a shootout on the city's west side. San Antonio police tell us more than 100 shots were fired. It happened around 11 last night. Our Camelia Wattis joins us live with the latest. Good morning, Camelia. Was anyone hurt? Max, Sarah, right now one person was in serious condition because they had several gunshots found in their back. Now it all started with a drug deal on Cormormon Street. Now that man that was shot several times, he was taken to University Hospital. Now we learned that at least six people were shooting at each other down the street. And SAPD says the crime scene is several blocks long. Two, two women sitting in a car were caught in, caught in the crossfire but aren't hurt despite bullet holes in the car. And right now, the wounded suspect is talking with police. Well, police are trying to talk to him. And detectives plan to continue questioning him to learn who those other suspects were. Reporting live, Kamalia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Kamalia. Topping your morning headlines, at least three people dead after two small planes crashing into each other midair in Colorado. So take a look. This all happened in Longmont. That's about 40 minutes north of Denver. Now, the FAA says two planes or two people were on board a single engine Cessna, but they're still investigating how many people were on the other plane that crashed. But the FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board, they're working to figure out what exactly caused the crash. In New York City, officials are scrambling to find shelter for migrants from the southern border after seven more buses full of people arrived on Friday. So far, the city has opened 23 emergency shelters and will have to open 38 more. Mayor Eric Adams says the city is looking into the possibility of going offshore, possibly using cruise ships as temporary housing. And here's something you don't see every day. A strong storm hitting Alaska as remnants of a typhoon move into the state. It's causing flooding in places like Nome. And as you can see here, a home floating on the Snake River before getting wedged up against a bridge. Now, residents who took the video say the water was so high that the home was unable to float under it. This morning, hundreds of thousands of mourners continue to wait up to 10 hours to pay their respects to Queen Elizabeth. Today, King Charles will host a reception at Buckingham Palace for heads of state and official overseas guests. Now, this is live. This is all ahead of tomorrow's state funeral for the Queen. ABC's Ines de la Terra has the latest from London. An emotional moment as the Queen's grandchildren stood vigil beside her coffin. 
This as thousands continue to brave the cold, standing in the queue, snaking through central London, in some cases for more than 22 hours. We've got four hours to go and it would be reflective, and which is what it's about. So that's what it's about for you? Sure, reflection. It's a very British thing to do is the queue, yes. They are calling it the queue of all queues. So uh, it's, a, it's nice to be taking part in it as well. These satellite images showing the line stretching for miles around the city's most famous landmarks. Some mourners getting a surprise visit from members of the royal family, King Charles, Prince William, coming out to greet well-wishers. It could be argued that the royal line of succession is in itself a very long and proud queue. Aubrey Blunt, a self-proclaimed queue enthusiast, will not be joining the queue, but just had to come out and see it. I've seen a lot of queues in my lifetime. I've seen festival queues. I've seen toilet queues. I've seen queues at job centers and food banks, but nothing as it compares to the magnitude of this queue. Blunt calling the queue breathtaking. It's a braver person than me that could actually stand in this queue for this long. I'm honestly just in awe of everyone I've seen today. I'm so proud of them for making this happen, the biggest queue in history, and I'm just so thrilled to witness it. Meanwhile, as final preparations for the Queen's funeral are underway, King Charles meeting with some of the world leaders who are in town, including the leaders of Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Jamaica, while the Queen consort paid tribute to the Queen. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile. You know, that smile is unforgettable. Around 2,000 people will attend the Queen's State funeral on Monday and today a reception for world leaders. Only working royals have been invited, so Harry, Meghan and Andrew will not attend. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, London. Time now, just about 6.07, 76 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, big news for fans of The Mandalorian. You won't have to wait as long for the new season to come out. We'll explain in your morning spotlight. And after the break, saving water, always a good idea, especially during the summer months. How you can do that around the house while helping the environment as well. We're gonna explain next. I definitely have been watering my plants. A lot of hand watering. Hand watering, of course. I don't have an irrigation system. <laughs> uh, because we have not had any rain. It's been super hot out there, and that trend, oh my gosh, it's gonna continue. Sarah Spivey will explain when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So this morning, saving water, always a good idea for the environment, but even more so these days, climate change leading to drought in so many areas. We're experiencing that right here in San Antonio. So it's good time to look at ways you can save water at home, especially outdoors. ABC's Alex Christophorus tells us how. Experts say a good way to start saving water at home is to look at your lawn. Lawns soak up more water than any other plants in your yard. Paul Hope, senior home and garden editor for Consumer Reports, says one tip is to let your grass grow longer. Ideally, you want to let your grass grow to a height of about four and a half inches and then only cut it down to a height of about three inches. Longer grass reduces evaporation, which means your lawn needs less water. Consider reducing the size of your lawn by replacing grass with mulch, ground cover or drought resistant plants. It's really nice because it adds some visual interest to your yard, but it also sets you up to cut less grass, you know, cut less frequently and save water in the process. Some other tips? Try to recycle rainwater by collecting it in rain barrels or by installing gutters and downspouts that direct runoff to your plants and trees. Don't use water to clean off your driveway or deck. Use a broom or a leaf blower instead. And do your watering early in the day. That's generally when it's the coolest and when the sun hasn't risen fully yet, which means that you don't need to apply as much water for that water to really get down into the root system before it dries up. Saving water around your home can save you money and help save the environment. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Of course, we know a lot of that already because we're under stage two water restrictions around San Antonio, so a lot of that Sounded pretty similar, didn't it, to the SAWS rules? All right, let's take a look at how much rain we've seen so far this month and this year. Now, the early part of September was actually pretty good to us. We saw about an inch of rain. But when you look at how much rain we should have, we should have more than two inches of rain out there right now. So we're about an inch and a quarter in deficit. And it's really bad when you look at the year. So since January 1st, we have only seen a little bit more than eight inches of rain. That is more than a foot 
below the amount of rain that we should have at the moment in San Antonio. So it has been a very dry year for us. And unfortunately, we just don't have any very good rain chances over the coming days. Sure, there's a 10% chance for a shower uh, to make it to the I-35 corridor today and tomorrow, but most of the rain will be coastal in nature. And then as we look at the week ahead, little to no chance for rain as well. So unfortunately, we're going to continue to see that rain deficit grow. And the reason for that, as you look at the radar and satellite across uh, the United States, you can see that the northern tier of the United States is at least getting some rain. But here in Texas, we have got this blocking high pressure system that is stronger than this trough of low pressure that is bringing some rain to northern California. So this blocking high is going to send all of this rain up and over the state of Texas. Now, it's a different story from one of the U.S. territories, Puerto Rico, right now, Puerto Rico is experiencing tropical storm conditions from tropical storm Fiona. You can see in this loop here that it's really started to organize just within the last couple of hours. And unfortunately, Puerto Rico is in a place where they are just to the north of the center of uh, tropical storm Fiona. So hurricane warnings in effect for Puerto Rico, winds of 75 gusts up to 95, but really a big impact for the island is going to be 16 to 25 inches inches of rain leading to a mudslide risk. Now that hurricane warning is through Monday afternoon for the island of Puerto Rico and Fiona is expected to strengthen as it heads into the Atlantic over the coming days, potentially impacting Bermuda, but it will stay offshore of the mainland uh, United States. So that is some good news there right now in San Antonio. It is cloudy. It is humid. Dew points are in the low 70s. It's 77 degrees southeast winds at about five miles per hour. We're already starting off the day with a bit of a heat index. Good morning in Del Rio at 77 degrees, 74 in Pleasanton, 74 in Gonzales, 72 in New Braunfels, 74 in Kerrville, and 77 in Hondo. Although it's cloudy right now, we are going to see the skies clear this morning and temperatures are going to be on the rise. Very similar to yesterday's weather, 87 degrees around noon. Southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour will be in the 90s in the afternoon. And yeah, a couple of coastal showers are possible. Our rain chance in San Antonio is only 10 percent, 95 for the high temperature. Elsewhere, it'll be 92 in Lotus, 97 in New Braunfels, 96 in Seguin, 95 in Poteet, 95 in Divine. 95 in Yavaldi, it'll be 96 in Gonzalez and 95 in Floresville, but it is going to stay humid all day. Dew points, yeah, they'll come down a little bit into the afternoon during the peak heat of the day, but still in the 60s, that is still in the humid category. And so because of that, that 95 here in San Antonio is going to feel a lot more like 100. Here's a look at the forecast heat index values. 101 New Braunfels, 100 in Seguin, 99 in Poteet, 102 in Floresville, 99 in Yavaldi, feeling like it's in the mid. 90s across the hill country and it'll feel like it's 100 closer to the coast. Here's a look at your forecast. Some coastal showers possible through Tuesday, but generally a fairly consistent forecast for you. Hey, stick around because I'm going to have Fido's forecast with your dog pictures coming up in the next half hour. Hope you can see that dog walking forecast for you. It's really fun. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, how many uh, pictures got sent in yesterday? We ended up getting about 100. Nice. So I won't be able to show all 100 dogs. Oh, but no. I do Darn. Want, I do <laughs> want to be able to show some of those pictures. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 76 degrees. Coming up, the Woodlawn Theater is moving to a new space in Balcone Heights, and they're getting a new name along with the move. That's still ahead in your morning spot. Spotlight. Plus, for all you gardeners out there, Sarah Costa, yeah. have you ever seen a purple tomato? I have. Not, okay. uh, not one that, that big, though. I've seen, like, the little ones. So they exist, and, well, there's a new push for a lot more. We're going to explain in just a few moments. First, take a look at your lotto numbers. Pick three, one, three, nine, fireball two. Daily four, one, two, nine, zero, fireball, zero. Cash five, 14, 15, 30, 32, 34, Lotto, Texas. Five, nine, 18, 22, 35, 48, and here we go. I didn't play. Okay. But it's over, it's well over 200 million. Let's go. Powerball numbers, five, 25, 36, 51, 61. Powerball one, power play three, good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. 
You say tomato, I say tomato. I don't know who says tomato other than people in Britain, but <laughs> what about the changing colors of a tomato? So a genetically modified tomato was turned purple by a team of scientists. Apparently it tastes, smells, and even feels like a tomato because it is. But this tomato isn't just pretty in purple. The scientist who made it say has more antioxidants oh. and a longer shelf life than garden variety red tomatoes and they just got USDA approval for their project, which means you could see it at your store near you. And you can throw this purple tomato on a cheeseburger because, yeah. hey, we're celebrating one of America's favorite foods. It is National Cheeseburger Day. You go cheesy, greasy, all this goodness. It started about 100 years ago, 1920s. Now, many restaurants claim to have invented the cheeseburger, including a California sandwich shop they say they came up with it back in 1926, but the Humpty Dumpty drive-in in Denver was technically the first to trademark the actual cheeseburger name, 1935. So Sarah, we kind of were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Smash burger, my mouth is watering because I now want a cheeseburger or like a thick burger. No, smash burger. Always smash burger. We're complete opposites. Like on extra everything. onions, extra cheese. Okay. Yeah, no. Because then you can have more than one if you want to. Yeah, I just I want like a half, a minimum half pound burger. Of That's course, it. of course you do. Time now, <laughs> 622, 76 degrees out. After the break with the Woodlawn Theater, it's making some big changes, including a new name. Don't miss the details in your morning spotlight. So now, ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce you to the Wonder Theater. That will be the new name of the Woodlawn Theater once they move to the Wonderland of America's Mall. At KSAT, previously reported, the local community theater will be taking over part of the mall space, formerly known as the Santicos Bijou in Balcones Heights. The big announcement was made at Woodlawn's annual gala last night. Our Myra Arthur was even the MC. You can see her right there. For the event, some of the theater's upcoming shows were also unveiled with the update on the extensive remodel. Performances at the New Wonder Theater are slated to begin next spring. Did you think your dad was the only Mandalorian? You know what? I'm going to let Sarah Costa do this because you actually watched the show. All right, Star Wars fans, get ready. We now know when the new season of The Mandalorian comes out. Mark your calendars for February of 2023. About five and a half months from now, the popular action series with the bounty hunter and lovable baby Yoda, Grogu, wrapped up its second season in December of 2020. So it's been a long wait, mm -hmm. but many of the popular heroes and villains are expected to return. We did see The Mandalorian in the other uh, series that came out, but it's we're waiting for this season. This is just all over my head, but one to 10, how excited are you? I'm pretty excited. Okay. It's, I mean, it's The Mandalorian. How Max Massey doesn't watch, I still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, just about 627, 76 degrees out. Still ahead at 630, a search and rescue canine leads the way in the search to find a woman that had been missing. How things unfolded last weekend in the middle of the night. Really is an amazing story. Plus, a warning from doctors about flu season and how you should handle it. Why some say it is already here. We're going to explain. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning. It is September 18th. So you went with the husband to play disc golf. Yeah. Did you play, or are you just a spectator? Um, No. I, I'll sometimes bring a nice little bag of discs. They're just a prop. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'll throw, like, one or two, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. I want to look at nature. Okay. Get distracted. But you got a lot of fresh air out there, and that's the important part. I, I did. Um, I got a lot of sun and probably got a good case of dehydration, Sarah oh, Spivey. Oh, no. I will. Um, don't be me. Well, here's the deal. It's the weekend, so people are going to enjoy some time outdoors. If you plan on enjoying some time outside, know that, yeah, it's going to look a lot like yesterday, very humid. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam. Cloudy skies. Here's a look at some of the readings across the city. At the airport, 77 degrees. Stinson, south side, 76. Ker Kelly area, 77. And JBSA Randolph near Converse, 73 degrees this morning. And the humidity is the big story out there as you're stepping out, getting ready to to start your Sunday, know that it is very humid outside. You're going to need some extra hairspray for church this morning. As you take a look at your Fido forecast, this is what we're excited about. A beautiful picture here of Birdie and Putter. Thank you to their uh, pet 
parents for sending in their pictures. If you want to send in pictures, scan this QR code right here. It'll take you to our KSAC Connect feature, and that's where you can actually upload a picture of your dog. And by the way, I'm getting some ideas here. It'd be great to, to um, show off some shelter dogs too uh, occasionally at, at a point. Uh, here or there. Looking at uh, the rest of the day, though, if you're planning on walking your pup, know that it is going to be pretty humid and hot. You got the green paw through the morning, but by the afternoon, red paw, it's going to be difficult. 90s with a heat index near 100. And then even after about sunset, it's still going to be warm at 86 degrees at 9 p.m. Here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast today. Hot and humid feeling like 100. Any rain, mainly coastal showers, but a 10% chance around San Antonio. And this week, I'm calling it a September sizzle. It's going to be very hot as we officially start fall on Thursday. I've got these details for you coming up. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police say more than 100 gunshots fired on the west side overnight. Investigators are looking for the people involved. Camelia Wattis joins us live with the latest. Camelia, what led up to the shooting? Sarah, Max, San Antonio police say it started with a drug deal on Cormat around 11 o'clock last night. We've learned that at least six people were shooting at each other down the street. Now, take a look at some video of that crime scene from last night. Now, San Antonio police say the crime scene is several blocks long. When police arrived, they found one man shot in the back several times. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Two women sitting in their car were caught in the crossfire, but they are okay despite bullet holes in the car. And right now, the wounded suspect is at University Hospital and detectives are working to get more information from him. Reporting live, Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Also new this morning, one man in critical condition in the hospital after being hit by a train overnight. Police tell us this all happened near West Laurel Street on the west side near downtown. Uh, police originally couldn't find the man after he was hit by the train, but SAPD eventually finding him under the train, getting him to Bamsey. Detectives still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened and why he was on the tracks. We have new details this morning on the deadly hit and run last week on Loop 410. Right now, the victim has been identified and police are looking for the driver. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office says 50-year-old Rafael Villarreal's body was found on the westbound lane of Loop 410 early Wednesday morning. Investigators say he was walking along Loop 410 near Ingram when someone in a car struck him and then drove off. Also this morning, a shooting ends with two people dead. Now, police say a man shot and killed a 41 year old woman before turning the gun on himself. So this was yesterday afternoon. The Bear County Sheriff's Office SWAT team spending hours pleading with a 42 year old man inside of a house on Knoll Creek subdivision to turn himself in. That's what they were asking, but he took his own life. Now, this all happened after the man shot the woman at her home on Capstone Ridge. Now, while the SWAT team negotiated with the man for two hours, Family members tell KSAT the victim was the suspect's ex-wife. We love her. Um, yes, yeah, she'll be missed. Anybody else in a relationship that's abusive or scared to speak out or, you know, whatever the case may be, man, the best thing to do is, is tell somebody. Authorities say the couple was living separately. Their names have not officially been released yet, and this investigation is still ongoing. This morning, we're getting flu seasons like apparently we've never had before. Last year's season lasted deep into the summer, and experts say the next one, it's already here. On top of that, local doctors are warning about an increase in other respiratory viruses. Courtney Friedman asked why we're seeing this trend and tells us how to avoid illness. I was in public health. We did uh, infected borne disease, disease prevention, and so it's incredibly important to get your flu shots. We say flu season. But really, it's respiratory virus season. The flu, the common cold, and respiratory syncytial virus, also known as RSV, all prevalent in our community right now. That's according to University Health Epidemiologist Dr. Jason Bowling. So the typical flu season really usually runs from about the beginning of October time frame to somewhere around April um, in a given year is the usual standard. But we've seen some changes with that over the last couple of years because of COVID. Now that COVID numbers are lower, people aren't taking as many precautions, wearing masks, avoiding crowds. Plus, the number of people who have received the flu shot is low. I'm going in the military, so if I have to, I will get it. But Dr. Bowling says now is the time for everyone to prepare for flu season, especially kids in school. 
As for the common cold in RSV, there's a list of symptoms to keep an eye out for. They may have fever, but it's a little bit less likely. More usually runny nose, a little bit of cough, maybe don't feel quite as energetic as usual. With flu, that tends to come on more suddenly. You're feeling good one day, the next day you wake up and you're feeling terrible. And that's why people in the community are choosing to protect themselves and their families by getting vaccinated. I've gotten it every year for however many years, and I've never had a serious case of flu since I had it, since I've taken the shots. Dr. Bowling says you can even take it one step further by bringing back some COVID-19 protections. We know that people are tired of masking, but masking really is an effective way to reduce your risk of getting upper, upper respiratory infections. And that was Courtney Friedman reporting. Dr. Bowling says the symptoms for the common cold, flu, and COVID have a lot of similarities. So it's best to be updated on all your vaccines. University Health is hosting a drive through flu shot event next Saturday. For more information, just head to our website, ksat.com. Time now, just about 638, 76 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA. Max, give us the update. All right, nothing but respect for the Roadrunners putting on a show in Austin against the Longhorns just wasn't enough. We're going to have highlights. We're going to hear from head coach Jeff Trailer, and we're going to look at what comes next. And a search and rescue canine leads the way in the search to find a missing woman. How things unfolded last weekend in the middle of the night. Let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. So one to ten, how would you rate humidity yesterday afternoon? Twelve. Twelve. OK, will it be the same today? We're going to check it with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Well, this morning, a canine doing search and rescue in North Carolina went the extra mile to find a woman with cognitive issues who disappeared in the middle of the night. An amazing story. Officer Roki is a Czech Shepherd with a sharp sense of smell. So his handler says he's so talented he can pick up a scent just from a paper clip. So on the night of September 11th, the family of an elderly woman this year called for help. Uh, she had walked outside away from home within 40 minutes. Roki led his team through an overgrown field. And he led the team right to the missing woman. Officers then helped reunite her with her family. So great job, Officer Roki. Thank you for your good service. Good job, Roki. All right, you've probably seen this on social media, but if you haven't checked this out, a 7-Eleven employee helped deliver a baby in Oregon. The incredible moments were caught on surveillance footage. It happened just after 3 in the morning on September 6th. Karen Warren says she heard frantic screams from the expecting mother and immediately called 911. Before emergency responders got there, she was standing beside her, giving instructions to breathe slowly, but then this happened. I think that's when she actually stuck her leg up on my shoulders, and I was like, whoa, okay. And the way she was screaming, you would have thought it was her first baby. How did you know what to instruct her to do at the time? I don't know, instinct, I guess, just, I guess. Mama mode? I don't know. Mama mode activated. All right. The couple was originally from California and didn't know where the nearest hospital was, which led them to the situation. Karen says they couldn't thank her enough Aww. and made her the godmother. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. Well, congratulations to the, uh, the couple with the new baby. That, what a story. <laughs> what a story. Mama mode activated. All right. Time now, 643. Sarah, it says it's only 76 degrees, but I feel like it's a little warmer out there. Well, that's because the humidity there, Max and Sarah. And, you know, even though it's fairly quiet across the United States, the contingent United States, there's been some flooding issues across Alaska from a uh, former typhoon out there in the Pacific. And then Puerto Rico is barreling down right now for uh, Tropical Storm Fiona, some flooding and some hurricane conditions from that expected throughout the day today as well. But as I said, it's fairly quiet around the U.S. at the moment, the contingent U.S. at the moment. Take a look at the wide view across the nation. We do have some showers and storms across northern uh, California and parts of the central plains out to the Great Lakes. But you'll notice that all of this rain is going up and over Texas, and that's because we've got a ridge of high pressure right overhead, right over our great state of Texas. Not only is this going to be keeping things dry, but it's going to be bringing us a bit of a 
September sizzle summer like heat this week 95 today and tomorrow and then as that high builds over the central plains it's going to be up to 100 degrees in parts of Kansas and Nebraska this week even hotter than Texas because uh, of that heat high firmly in place and then by Thursday we'll be dealing with the hotter temperatures here in San Antonio close to 100 degrees both Thursday and Friday with that heat high overhead and it's going to keep out rain chances as I mentioned. Now, both today and tomorrow, there is the potential for a few coastal showers and only a 10% chance for one or two of those to make it to that I-35 corridor closer here to San Antonio. But still a very dry, hot, summer-like weather pattern for us as we officially start fall on Thursday with the autumnal equinox. Outside right now, starting a lot like the last couple of mornings with some clouds out there, 76 degrees, and it's humid. Dew points are in those low uh, 70s, so we are are already experiencing a bit of a heat index value out there early this morning. Good morning in Bulverde at 75 degrees in your neighborhood, 79 in Castroville, 74 in Divine, 73 Burning Area, 73 in Kerrville, 73 in Gonzales, 70 in Seguin. And again, the humidity is the big story today as it was yesterday too. Dew points well into the 70s, oppressively humid out there. And as we look at the high res future cast, most of the rain today will be closer to the coast. So near Victoria, Goliad, Corp Corpus Christi and Houston, and even then it's going to be fairly isolated at best. There is the off chance that one or two of these coastal showers could come closer to San Antonio metro area, so chance for rain is only 10% today. It is going to be a pretty hot and humid hot and humid Sunday for us. 95 in Del Rio, it'll be 95 in Pleasanton, 96 in Gonzales, 95 in LaGrange, 95 Canyon Lake, 93 in Kerrville, 95 in Pleasanton, neighborhood view of high temperatures here around San Antonio, 95 Rio Medina, uh, Medina Lake area, 96 in Seguin, 97 in New Braunfels, in Uvalde it'll be 95, and in the low 90s across parts of the hill country, including Bernie, Bulverde, Comfort, and Kerrville. One thing to keep in mind is that it's going to be very humid throughout the day today. So a heat index value is likely around San Antonio. Even though temperatures are only going to be in the mid 90s this afternoon, it is going to feel closer to 100 degrees. As we look ahead to the next several days, know that again, some coastal showers are going to be possible through about Tuesday, but the forecast does look pretty similar day to day. A copy and paste forecast for us over the next several days. Fall does officially start on Thursday with the autumnal equinox at 8.03. It is not going to feel like fallout Outside. It's going to be 97 degrees. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that first pumpkin spice latte strong cold front, but it's just not in the forecast over the next seven days. One good thing is that after Tuesday, the humidity will come down a little bit. So you can see that mornings, uh, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, going to be kind of comfortable, closer to 70 degrees in the early morning hours. So at least we've got that going for us. Otherwise, hot guys. Thank you, Sarah. We do have an incident that uh, just popped up. Over on Transguide, US 90 in the westbound lanes are closed. We'll get to that in just a bit. Time now, 647, 76 degrees just ahead. UTSA, not the only football team making a lot of noise here in the Alamo City. We're going to check in on UIW and their fast start to the season. Here's that crash we were just talking about. You're looking at the westbound lanes of US 90. They have shut that down for an incident that's near Loop 410. Again, US 90 westbound lanes are shut down near Loop 410 for a crash. We'll keep you posted on the incident throughout the morning. All right, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, 139, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 129, 0, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 14, 15, 30, 32, 34. Texas Lotto, 5, 9, 18, 22, 35, 48. Here's the big one, Powerball, 5, 25, 36, 51, 61, Powerball 1, Power Play 3. UTSA going head to head with number 21 ranked Texas Longhorns at Royal Memorial Stadium. And well, in the beginning, it looked like the Roadrunner was going to pull it out. So off the upset early. Let's see. Second quarter. All right. Trick play. Love it. A little backwards toss. And then wait for it. Brandon Brady on a halfback pass. Zachary Franklin, 35 yard touchdown. UTSA leading 17-7, but the Longhorns 
rising to the challenge, outscoring the Roadrunners 34-3 over the final 40 minutes. Bijan Robinson scoring on this 78-yard touchdown run third quarter that gave Texas a 24-17 lead. And the Texas defense making the play of the game, returning a interception 44 yards for a touchdown. UT Austin would end up winning 44 41 to 20. The Roadrunners, though, taking ownership of the mistakes after the game. Every one of the opportunities was self-inflicted, whether it's a touchdown pass um, the first time, uh, the interception on me, self-inflicted, um, the drop by Takari, self-inflicted. Um, he's hard on himself, so he's down right now. Um, all those things were all that something that we had control of, nothing that they did. We didn't play as well as we wanted to, um, so it was kind of disappointing. We wanted to come up here and, you know, Start off early and start off fast, which I think that we did. We just, you know, they made some plays. We made some plays. They just ended up making some more. So um, this is good teach tape for us. Um, we'll be able to watch it and get things corrected that we need corrected and focus on next week. We're, we're in a frustrating grind right now. But when you play really, really good people, I mean, three in a row, man, they're not a tougher schedule in the country anybody's gone through what my kids have been through right now. So anybody comes to my kids right now, they better get ready. I'm going to be like that old protective grandma on Sunday after church right now. I'm coming back like a bear. You know, you know it's a, you know it's a great game when his voice sounds like that, and the sound bites are undefeated. So the Roadrunners play Texas Southern next. Meanwhile, UIW improving to three and zero of the season, a 31-14 road victory over Prairie View A&M. Cardinals quarterback Lindsey Scott, 30 passes, 228 yards, three touchdowns. UIW will start Southland Conference play just next week. And of course, our Trinity Tigers also undefeated 3-0, crushing Texas Lutheran last night 52-14. Legend Grigsby rushing for two touchdowns, catching a third in the big win. Trinity will have a bye week next week. They open conference play on October 1st. Oh, I'm so excited. We have a lot more to talk about. We're obviously going to preview the Cowboys and the Texans in our 8 o'clock hour. I'm going to start using that. Protective grandmother on a Sunday. After church. <laughs> After church. <laughs> Time now, just about 6.55, 76 degrees out. Here's what's coming up at 7 on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, honoring the Queen, the world preparing for the funeral of Queen Elizabeth and the next chapter for the British monarchy. Amy Robach and TJ Holmes join us from London ahead of our extended live coverage of the historic event tomorrow morning. Plus, it's one of the biggest security operations in history as hundreds of thousands of mourners and world leaders, including President Biden, descend on London. That's all ahead coming up on GMA. Northside ISD is almost a month into the school year, and for some students, families, and teachers, this is really the first year back in person. So this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're set to speak with the Northside ISD Deputy Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Janice Jordan. We'll be talking about academic initiatives, the impact that COVID had on students and families, and redistricting in NISD. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Well, KSAC community is getting ready for what has become a yearly tradition here. Registration is open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure, the 5K run and walk raises awareness and funds to fight brain cancer. KSAC's former news director, Jim Boyle, was diagnosed with brain cancer and passed away, but his le legacy lives on. Now, his daughter helped kick off this event outside our KSAT studios back in 2014. Since then, the event has grown with more families running for the survivors and running in remembrance of their loved ones. So this year, it all kicks off on September 24th. You can register right now on our website, ksat.com. Use the promo code KSAT to get $5 off registration. A week from yesterday. All right, let's take a look outside today. Uh, we're going to be quickly warming up. We're already in the mid 70s, but we do have some clouds out there. But by 10, we are going to have more sunshine than clouds. It'll be 87 around noon, 95 for the high temperature. But the 95 is going to feel closer to 100 degrees. Southeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunsets at 735, and we see temperatures fall. Temperatures out there right now, again, in the mid to upper 70s. It's very humid. Looking ahead, to the next few days pretty much the same. Uh, we're going to be looking at a high humidity, high heat through about Tuesday. Humidity will come down during the latter half of the week, but it's still going to be hot with highs close to 100 degrees. We still technically are one day shy of the most 100 degree days on record. One day. Let's not do it. 
We'll see you back here, 8 a.m. See you at 8. <laughs> Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Starting with a live look out of the Alamo City, 76 degrees out there now, but that does not tell the full story. If you look out there, you can't see the sunshine. You can't see any of the blue in the sky, and it feels like it was yesterday. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is September 18th, and happy you, birthday to the Air Force, first and foremost. 75th? 75th. Hey, you look great. <laughs> Looking great. You can't see the humidity. No, but That's you can right. feel it. You can feel it. Your hair feels it your clothes, it sticks to your skin, Sarah. Yeah, it is so humid out there and a lot like yesterday, it's going to stay humid into the afternoon too. So not necessarily feeling that crisp fall feeling that we like to feel occasionally in September. It's still hot and it's going to continue to be hot today. Take a look outside. There are some breaks in those clouds and very soon here, here we will start to see those clouds clear at the airport though, where this camera is, it's 76 degrees and winds are from the southeast at about five miles per hour. But again, same old, same old here in San Antonio today. It is very humid outside. Dew points are in the 70s. Yesterday we had a stout southeasterly wind continuing to bring in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. Humidity is at the top of the scale right now. Oppressively humid, icky, sticky outside. And during the day today, that humidity is going to stay pretty high. We'll be at 82 at 10, partly cloudy around noon with 87 degrees, and then 95 for the high temperature. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles miles per hour that 95 is going to feel more like 100 degrees. Now, even though we did have some rain earlier to start the month, it is continuing to be a very dry year around San Antonio. I have a look at rain chances ahead in the week and our September sizzle will continue on. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to that shooting where more than 100 gunshots fired on the city's far west side overnight. So this is what we know right now. Police say six people involved in the shooting. One of them shot multiple times in the back. He was taken to University Hospital at last check in a serious condition. This happened just after 1130 last night on Cormorant and Water's Edge in a neighborhood near Ingram and Marbach Road. Investigators say the shooting started as a drug deal and ended in gunfire between two vehicles that spanned several blocks. Now during the shootout, bullets hit a parked car with two women inside. Luckily, those individuals were not injured. Bullets also hitting another parked vehicle with no one in it. Investigators say everyone involved took off after the gunfire, but police are still investigating. They plan to question the one person who was shot. San Antonio police are still looking for the driver accused of hitting a man while he was walking and then took off. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identified 50-year-old Rafael Villarreal as the victim. San Antonio police say his body was found in the westbound lane of Loop 410 Wednesday morning. Investigators say he was walking along Loop 410 near Ingram when someone in a car struck him and drove off. And hundreds of thousands of mourners continue to wait up to 10 hours to pay their last respects to Queen Elizabeth II. Today, King Charles will host a reception at Buckingham Palace for heads of state and official overseas guests. All of this ahead of the state funeral for tomorrow. All of this for the late queen. ABC's Enos de la Catera has the latest from London. An emotional moment as the queen's grandchildren stood vigil beside her coffin. This as thousands continue to brave the cold, standing in the queue, snaking through central London, in some cases for more than 22 hours. We've got four hours to go and it will be reflective, and which is what it's about. So that's what it's about for you? Sure, reflection. It's a very British thing to do is the queue, yes. They are calling it the queue of all queues. So uh, it's, a, it's nice to be taking part in it as well. These satellite images showing the line stretching for miles around the city's most famous landmarks. Some mourners getting a surprise visit from members of the royal family, King Charles, Prince William, coming out to greet well-wishers. It could be argued that the royal line of succession is in itself a very long and proud queue. Aubrey Blunt, a self-proclaimed queue enthusiast, will not be joining the queue, but just had to come out and see it. I've seen a lot of queues in my lifetime. I've seen festival queues, I've seen toilet queues, I've seen queues at job centers and food banks, but nothing as it compares to the magnitude of this queue. Blunt calling the queue breathtaking. It's a braver person than me that could actually stand in this queue for this long. I'm honestly just in awe of everyone I've seen today. I'm so proud of them for making this happen, the biggest queue in history, and I'm just so thrilled to witness it. 
Meanwhile, as final preparations for the Queen's funeral are underway, King Charles meeting with some of the world leaders who are in town, including the leaders of Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Jamaica, while the Queen consort paid tribute to the Queen. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile. You know, that smile is unforgettable. Around 2,000 people will attend the Queen's State funeral on Monday and today a reception for world leaders. Only working royals have been invited, so Harry, Meghan and Andrew will not attend. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, London. Well, back here at home, Northside ISD, almost a month into the school year. And for some students, families and teachers, this is really their first time back in person. So joining us in today's Leading SA segment is Northside ISD Deputy Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Janice Jordan. Dr. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Jordan, we see a lot of reports that show students' math and reading scores. They've gone down in the aftermath of this pandemic. Have you guys seen the same impact? You know, we certainly have. We anticipated it would take us, you know, multiple years for students to get back to pre-pandemic levels in their reading performance and mathematics performance. Math in particularly has been hit the hardest. Uh, the great news is our students, through the tremendous work of our teachers um, and parents coming together, we've seen terrific gains. Uh, we still have a ways to go, though. Uh, we focus on all of our students, and we have certain student groups who have more gaps than others. Um, so we're continuing to walk the path of targeted instruction and are hoping we continue to see that growth. So, Dr. Jordan, are there new academic initiatives in place that families in the community should know about? Yes, we're really excited to expand our efforts in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we have a couple of magnet schools that focus on STEM, but we are actually now moving STEM concepts throughout all campuses in the district that focus on higher order thinking skills. Uh, meaningful problem solving. So we're just beginning those efforts um, to move it beyond just certain schools. Uh, we're happy to report that this year, all of our elementary schools have uh, a lab that's a STEM lab where students rotate in and do coding, do building, um, take things apart, innovate. So uh, we're very excited to help raise the level for all students, no matter what campus. In terms of, you know, compensating for the last two years of a lot of students, a lot of families losing a sort of education, you know, do you guys have any special plans to catch up those students? And uh, you mentioned a, a bigger gap with a specific group of students. What are those specific groups? Um, yes, yeah, so our students who receive special education services, uh, we saw a bigger hit to their performance, which makes sense. Those are students who have very specific needs that our schools are best equipped to meet those needs. So when those children are not in our schools, uh, we certainly do the best that we can. Our students who are emergent bilingual, um, also, our schools are the best places for their needs to be met. Um, so any gap in their education has a larger impact. So we are targeting, um, certainly we want to raise a level for all students with high quality instruction every day. Um, but we are specifically targeting those students to make sure that we know exactly where they are academically and create individualized plans so they can make the growth that they need. So, Dr. Jordan, NISD is set to begin single member redistricting. So what should families know and how should they get involved? So um, our website, www.nisd.net, is the best place to start. There is information about uh, this process. And to be clear, this is not changing the attendance zones for any campus. This isn't changing the north side external attendance zone. Um, so this is a very open process. We had a community meeting last week for input. 
Uh, we have another community meeting this next week on September 20th. And so we invite the public, if they have ideas, to um, come bring them to us. And again, check the website uh, for more information on that. All right, Dr. Jordan, thank you so much for taking your time this morning, joining us, and anyone who has any questions about anything that we talked about, we're going to have all that information on ksat.com. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks so much. Time now, 810, 76 degrees out. All right, from restaurants with high scores to a meat grinder that was not properly cleaned up, that's next as we go behind the kitchen door. Let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 76 now. How warm will it get today? What will the work week look like? Our Sarah Spivey has it all in just a bit. Welcome back. Every week, KSAT's Behind the Kitchen Door keeps our viewers updated with the weekly restaurant reports. We track the latest health inspection scores and we bring it all to you. So we want to tell you about four local restaurants who had scores in the 80s. They also had plenty of violations to correct after recent visits from health inspectors. From a meat grinder coated in leftover meats to employees touching food with dirty hands. Here's more with Behind the Kitchen Door. up, Taqueria Los Dos Laredos in the 400 block of South New Braunfels on the east side earned an 80. Dirty pots, pans, and other utensils needed to be rewashed while spice containers were dirty on the inside and outside. Shelves, handles, and the insides of coolers all needed to be cleaned. So did the floors and ceiling. All expired food handler certificates needed to be renewed. <laughs> Urban Pickle, located in this office tower in the 1700 block of Northeast Loop 410, got an 81. Their cold hold unit wasn't cold enough. The inside of the ice machine was dirty, and the can opener was full of grime and dirt. An employee was seen cracking an egg while using gloves and then touching ready-to-eat foods without changing gloves or washing their hands. Another employee was caught touching ready-to-eat food with bare hands and no hand washing. Medicine belonging to a worker was also found on a rack right above ready-to-eat food. <laughs> Las Concas, Torteria, and Panaderia in the 1100 block of South General McMullen comes in with an 83. They were cited for keeping the front and back doors propped open, allowing insects to get inside. Nymph roaches were found in a restroom and office area. Ants were also a problem. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Thrifty Mart in the 6700 block of South Zarzamora got an 85. Unpackaged meat in the freezer was touching the wire rack and other meats. More meat was found stored on the floor. A meat grinder and slicer had leftover meat and food debris stuck to them. The inspector didn't see anyone wash their hands during this inspection. There were also several flies in the kitchen and a door handle was soiled with residue. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. We are also tracking businesses that have better scores. Just take out your phone, scan this QR code on your screen. It'll take you to a new mapping tool that show all the scores for local food businesses. The reports go back six months and they are frequ frequently updated. All right, time now, 816, 77 degrees. So Sarah Spivey, how warm will it get today? Well, if you want to talk about technical temperatures, mid 90s. Okay. If you want to talk about the heat index, no. it's going to feel like it's close to 100 degrees outside. And yeah, unfortunately, no big rain chances for us. A couple of coastal showers are possible. You know, the first part of September was pretty good to us, right? We got about an inch of rain since September 1st. But by this point in September, we should have more than two inches of rainfall. So we are experiencing a rain deficit for the month. And it's really bad when you look at the year, if I'm just being honest with you. So since January 1st, we've really only seen a little bit more than an uh, more than eight inches of rainfall. And that is actually more than a foot of rain deficit for us in San Antonio. We should have almost 15 inches of rain in addition to that eight inches of rainfall. And so even though we have seen regional improvements to the drought monitor with very little to no rain in our future, we may see drought conditions worsen locally around San Antonio and South Central Texas. As for rain chances, both today and tomorrow, some coastal showers are possible. One or two of those may try to make it to that I-35 corridor, so the chance for rain is about 10% both today and tomorrow. But in the week ahead, 
really, really difficult to see anything that's going to be giving us any kind of rain. And, and here's the reason why. As you look at the satellite and radar across the nation, you can see that there's plenty of rain for North uh, California, across the Central Plains, some rainfall out toward the Great Lakes as well. But all of that is moving up and over Texas because of this blocking high pressure system. High pressure system compresses the air at the surface and prevents uh, showers and storms from developing in a major way. And this high is going to win out compared to that trough of low uh, pressure out in Northern California. Now, while we're dry, it's a different story for Puerto Rico today. This is Tropical Storm Fiona, almost a hurricane. It's probably going to be gaining hurricane strength here within a, a few hours. You can see it's actually organizing and it's just the center of Fiona is just passing to the south of the island of Puerto Rico. But that's actually bad news for them because Puerto Rico is going to be on the side of the storm that brings the highest wind and the highest amount of rain. So wind gusts of up to 95 miles per hour are possible, especially on the south side of the island. 16 to 25 inches of rain is going to create some flooding issues and mudslide risks across the island of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic will be impacted by Fiona as well. Now Fiona is expected to stay away from the mainland uh, of the United States, but it could impact Bermuda as a category two hurricane by the end of this week. Outside right now, we are starting to see the skies clear around San Antonio, still mostly cloudy though, 76 and locally it's 75 in Hondo, 74 in Kerrville. Good morning in New Braunfels, it's 74, 75 in Del Rio and 72 in Carrizo Springs. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for clearing skies, warming temperatures. It'll be 87 by lunch and then in the afternoon we'll be in the 90s. 4 p.m. to about 7 p.m. we have a 10% chance for a stray shower, 95 for the high temperature, winds from the southeast today, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Locally, it's going to be hot. 96 in Seguin, 97 in New Braunfels, 95 in Castroville, 95 in Floresville, 96 in Gonzales, and 93 in Kerrville. And the humidity, even though it will go down a little bit in the afternoon, dew points will fall into the 60s, it's still going to be humid during the peak heat of the day in the afternoon. So that means that 95 is going to feel closer to 100. Look at these uh, forecast heat index values. 101 New Braunfels and Seguin, 102 Floresville, Nixon Smiley. Very hot today, so if you have outdoor plans between about 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., stay hydrated. We're going to see a pretty similar forecast through the week. The one thing that's going to change is look at those morning lows Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Near 70 degrees, not too bad. Humidity will be nice and low for the morning hours. It's still going to be hot, though, for the first official day of fall. We'll be at 97. Coming up, Fido's forecast, pictures of your dogs and your dog walking forecast. I've got that for you coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. I love the Fido's forecast. Me you too. started off. Scooby was the first. Well, Scooby is a professional model. He's a trendsetter. <laughs> He's her dog. For oh, those yeah, yeah. who Scooby don't know. Scooby is my dog. He's watching at home on the couch. Hi, Scooby. Time now, 821, 77 degrees. Out. All right, if you have been having trouble with keeping the wallet light during grocery shopping with inflation, we'll give you some tips on how to shop for budget friendly meals. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, one, three, nine, fireball two, daily four, one, two, nine, zero, fireball zero. Cash 5, 14, 15, 30, 32, 34, Texas Lotto, 5, 9, 18, 22, 35, 48, Powerball 5, 25, 36, 51, 61, Powerball 1, Power Play 3. It's at 238 million. Good luck. <laughs> While not a major holiday in Mexico and often confused with Mexico's Day of Independence, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated across the United States and especially in Texas because of one man, General Ignacio Zaragoza. Zaragoza, a native of Goliad, Texas, helped lead the charge at the Battle of Puebla and a victory over the French Army during the Franco-Mexican War on the 5th of May, 1862. The victory helped boost the morale of the Mexican Army and the people with a sense of national pride and patriotism. But General Zaragoza didn't enjoy his victory for very long. Only four months after the Battle of Puebla, he died of typhoid fever at the age of 33. The first celebrations of Cinco de Mayo said to have taken place in California. Today, Ignacio Zaragoza is remembered as a symbol of Texas valor. And with deep ties to Mexico, Cinco de Mayo has become part of Texas culture.
During the month of September, the KSAC community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank. We are raising awareness about food insecurity. So if you've had a hard time saving money or spending too much on groceries, I think we've all felt it because of inflation. The San Antonio Food Bank has some advice for you. First, plan ahead. Make a grocery list and look for sales before you head to the store. And lastly, be willing to make replacements for ingredients in your recipes. We have more information about budget-friendly meals on our website on ksat.com. Time now, 827, 77 degrees out. A hurricane warning issued for Puerto Rico has many concerned of rolling blackouts. We'll tell you about that next. And Bed Bath & Beyond closing some of their stores, trying to stay afloat. We're going to explain which stores and why in the next half hour. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 18th. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Sarah, I, I didn't pay attention to the heat yesterday and I went out in it in the afternoon. That was a bad choice, but I did pay attention to your Fido's forecast mm. and I walked my dogs early. If only Way we had go. someone telling us it was going to be hot in the afternoon. <laughs> and if only we had someone who would pay attention <laughs> the whole time. I'm just messing with you, Sarah. I was paying attention. I was not. I I'm just messing with you. And you do bring up a good point. You know, that humidity kind of sneaks up on you when it comes to the heat. And so today, just know that it is going to be humid and hot, Sarah, okay? So hydrate. All right, 76 degrees in the airport, 76 at Stinson, 77 at Kelly, and 75 near Converse, uh, JBSA Randolph. So a warm morning here, and it's all about that humidity, as we've been saying. Dew points are in the low 70s. Here's Fido's forecast. We got this wonderful picture sent in of Buddy. Thank you for sending in the picture of your pup. If you want to send in pictures uh, for Fido's forecast of your dogs, go ahead and scan that QR code right there. It's going to take you to our KSAC Connect feature. Not only can you bring up beautiful pictures of your dog like Buddy, but you can uh, upload pictures of the weather, and we love to show your weather pictures as well. So if you're planning on taking a walk today with your dog, as Sarah mentioned, do it in the morning. It's going to get hot in the afternoon, 95 for the high temperature with the heat index near 100. So thank you for sending in that picture of Buddy. We're also hopeful to send in some pictures of some pups who need homes from animal shelters and things like that. Today, the high, uh, the high temperature will be in the mid-90s, but it's going to feel closer to 100. Any rain? Well, mainly coastal showers today. 10% chance for San Antonio to see a shower. And this week, we got that September sizzle. Temperatures will be pretty hot as we officially start fall on Thursday. Details on that coming up in a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, this morning, a man in critical condition after being hit by a train overnight on the city's west side. This is what we know right now. San Antonio police tell us this all happened by West Laurel Street near downtown. Now, originally, police couldn't find the man after he was hit, but they walked down the track and they found the blood. Now, they then found this victim under the train. EMS called to the scene. The man was transported to Bamsey. Well, this morning, a man is dead after shooting and killing a 41 year old woman and then killing himself. And this happened yesterday afternoon. The Bear County Sheriff's Office SWAT team spent hours pleading with a 42 year old man inside of a home on Knoll, in the Knoll Creek subdivision to turn himself in before he eventually took his own life. It happened after the man shot the woman at her home on Capstone Ridge while the SWAT team negotiated with the man for two hours. Family members tell KSAT the victim was his ex-wife. We love her. Um, yes, yeah, she'll be missed. Yeah. Anybody else in a relationship that's abusive or scared to speak out or, you know, whatever the case may be, man, the best thing to do is, is tell somebody. Authorities say the couple was living separately and their names have not been officially released by police. This investigation is ongoing. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Geological Survey says a 6.9 magnitude earthquake hitting Taiwan's southeastern coast. So images from the area showing some of this devastation that it caused. Now you see here several buildings collapsing, a train even being derailed because of the earthquake. The island's official central news agency reporting at least three people trapped under a collapsed building. Alaska is facing severe weather. People captured video footage of the effects of a typhoon. Just take a look. The video shows the water creeping closer and closer to cars and buildings. Officials say water levels are more than eight feet above normal. 
Streets have been shut down and there's an emergency shelter for people now as well. Along with the rising water, there is also reports that the wind peaked at 65 to 75 miles per hour in some areas on Friday night. A hurricane warning now issued for Puerto Rico this morning and people are stocking up on items. Hurricane Fiona lashing at the Caribbean forecast to dump over 20 inches of rain. Here's ABC's Victor Kendo with the latest. This morning, Fiona barreling towards Puerto Rico, now under a hurricane warning. The tropical storm dumping rain throughout the Caribbean, one person killed near the island of Guadalupe. Residents in San Juan with last minute preparations, stocking up on supplies, boarding up homes and businesses. The locals know the drill, now bracing for blackouts, with thousands already without power. On a much smaller storm, will you lose power? <laughs> Every single day. Fiona's winds and rain could cause real problems in Puerto Rico, from flooding and mudslides to widespread outages. The island's power grid is notoriously fragile. We spoke with the new utility company in charge of fixing it. Should the people of Puerto Rico feel more confident in the power grid now than in the months past, the years past? Absolutely. We've done quite a bit of work. we replaced quite a bit of poles, uh, but we're not finished. We have a lot more to do. Larry Duke and his wife Trina now preparing for their first tropical storm. Oh, we got chicken, we got snacks, we got uh, fruits, drinks. You know, we, we, I mean, hey, ain't nothing we can do. It was nearly five years ago to the day Hurricane Maria battered Puerto Rico. Nearly 3,000 people died in the wake of the storm. That was Victor Okendo reporting. Oh, Bed Bath & Beyond trying to stay afloat, which means layoffs and shutdowns. Now, the retailer planning to close 150 of their stores. They just announced 50 of them spread out across the country from Arizona to Washington State. The company trying to rescue itself from having to file bankruptcy. They hope that cutting jobs and closing down stores, along with more than $500 million in financing, well, they hope that'll help them stay afloat because the business model itself, it is struggling against other big box stores and, of course, Amazon's low prices. Now to an update of that shooting where police say over 100 shots were fired, spanning over several blocks is happening on the city's far west side last night. Camelia Juarez is joining us live from the scene. So, Camelia, how does it look out there? Well, Max, Sarah, we've just gotten out here, and right now we spoke to a couple neighbors, and they tell us that they heard the gunfire. And right behind me is a charger that is riddled with bullets. I mean, you can see there's about six bullet holes across the car. There's even a flat tire um, on it. And we're told that the, the shooting was going on last night and even a car fell into or drove into one of the buildings. San Antonio police say it started on as a drug deal on Cremormant Street around 11 last night. We've learned at least six people were shooting at each other down the street. San Antonio police say, uh, like you said, the crime scene is several blocks long. When police arrived, they found one man shot in the back several times. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition and two women sitting in a car were caught in that crime crossfire, except for obviously these bullet holes that we see in the car. Now, right now, the wounded suspect is at University Hospital and detectives are trying to learn more information from him. Reporting live on the west side, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Kamalia. Time now just about 839, 77 degrees out. Oh my gosh, this video is going to be so good. I just feel bad. I feel bad. Now we can chuckle about it, Why Sarah. Why don't you tell people about it? Okay, so Ksat tried the hot chip challenge, and it was hot, including our very own Sarah Spivey. <laughs> John Paul Barajas was a champ, though. Got to give him credit. All right, we got sports to talk about, a lot of big game coverage, everything you need to know, and what comes next. We got NFL action today. Hot like the hot chip challenge, so is the weather, even though fall is only a couple days away, not feeling like it, Sarah Spivey will have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning. Coming up on this week, we'll have a live report from the U.S.-Mexico border as Republican governors send thousands of migrants north in a protest over the Biden administration's policies. I'll speak with two leaders dealing with the humanitarian and political fallout, the mayor of El Paso and the mayor of New York City. 
plus a This Week exclusive. I'll talk to Ukraine's ambassador to the United States about new evidence of Russian war crimes and Joe Biden's warning to Vladimir Putin not to use chemical or nuclear weapons. All that and more coming up on This Week. All right, welcome back. We had a lot going on over the weekend. Yesterday's a big game coverage over at Hero Stadium. Number nine, Johnson taking on Churchill. Second quarter, Jags up 10-0. Ty Hawkins hitting Caden Rizzo. Ooh, walking in for a nine-yard score. 17-0 lead. Next, Johnson possession. They strike again. Fourth and three, Hawkins finding Lauren Johnson. Look at that. Shoestring grab, breaking a tackle, cuts back against the green, racing the end zone. 29-yard score. They wouldn't even touch him three yards in. That's a touchdown, and Jags led 24-3 at halftime. They go on to win big 30-17, and that is not all. Number 11, Burbank, return to Alamo Stadium, hosting Highland. Owls catching the Bulldogs off guard, opening kickoff. Ooh, Uriel Salazar recovers his own onside kick. Two plays later, Highland going deep. Joseph Clay to Kennedy Jackson behind the defense. 37 yards, 7-0. Owls, Burbank answers, though. Very next drive, Kevin Hernandez rolling out. Finding Jordan Palmo, Enzo, nine yards score, tied it up at seven, but oh my goodness, it ended up being a big win, 40 to 21, all owls. And we're just starting the day off because obviously UTSA, UT last night. We have NFL action today, Texans versus Broncos, Cowboys, Bengals, both at 325. So the Cowboys, obviously a quarterback situation going on right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got a hot take. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. I'm going to try to get back on the camera for this one. So the Ravens have looked phenomenal. All the credit to Lamar Jackson. All the credit to the defense. They're not getting a lot Are enough love. Are you going to say what I think so you're going to say? So I think, I, I know it's just week one. This is a week one, week one and a half. Overreaction, and the purple actually works. Ravens win the Super Bowl. Bold. Who you got? I'm here for the commercials. Okay. Commercials always win. Sarah, Sarah Spivey. Spivey. Chiefs. Ooh. Chiefs. They did look My good Thursday. The Chiefs. They look good Thursday. Now, kudos to the defense. Chiefs turned it around there with that pick six from the 99 yard line. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look out at the uh, uh, South Central Texas. We do have a couple of isolated showers near Beeville right now. Most of the rain today is going to be coastal and isolated, but it is quiet across Texas in general today. Uh, take a look uh, out to the west. We've got a trough of low pressure bringing some healthy rains to North Texas, but notice that all of the rain pretty much goes up and over the state. Well, that's because we have got a ridge of high pressure right over Texas right now. That high pressure system, it blocks rain from developing in a big way, and it also makes it hot summertime hot. Take a look at the heat this week. Tomorrow will be at 95 a lot like today. And then as we head into the middle of the week, not only is it going to be hot here in San Antonio, but across the central plains, we're looking at triple digits up in Kansas and in Nebraska this week. Very uh, summer like with that heat high right overhead. And then as we head into the latter half of the week too, we'll be seeing temperatures in the upper 90s. Our only saving grace is that during the second half of the week, our humidity is going to come down a little bit, but that high is really going to keep out any good rain chances and we really need rain. September is one of our rainiest months. Only a couple of coastal showers possible today and tomorrow and then the rest of the week does look pretty dry. I told you those morning clouds are going to clear out. We're seeing plenty of blue skies out there at the airport right now. 76 degrees feels like 76, but you still feel that humidity. Dew points in the uh, mid, a uh, low to mid 70s right now. Good morning in Hondo. It's 75, already 81 in Divine, 72 in Seguin, 74 in New Braunfels, 71 in Comfort, 74 in Kerrville. Again, the humidity is the big story today, much like yesterday. As soon as you step outside, you feel the humidity and it's going to couple with the heat this afternoon and make it feel a lot hotter than what the thermometer actually reads. Here's a look at that high risk future cast. Like I said, coastal showers isolated today uh, from Corpus Christi to Beeville to Victoria to Houston. And there is an off chance 10% that one or two of those could make it to San Antonio in the later afternoon hours. Generally though, just gonna be a hot one for us. High temperature of 95 in Eagle Pass in Del Rio, 96 in Gonzales, 95 Canyon Lake, 89 in Rock Springs, 95 in Hondo. Neighborhood view around San Antonio, Poteet, 95, 97 in New Braunfels, 96 in Seguin, 
95 in Converse, 92 in Lotus, and 92 in Bernie. But the heat index is going to be a factor today, as I mentioned. So as we look at uh, the afternoon hours, that 95 is going to feel a lot more like 100 out there. Still technically, we're one 100 degree day away from having the most 100 days in a year. And although I'm forecasting 97 on Thursday, Friday, it's not out of the question that if we get dry enough, we could end up seeing that. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that for now, though. Know that the only thing to really look forward to in the weather this week is lower temperatures in the morning, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It'll feel okay outside with uh, morning lows near 70 degrees. We'll be back with more news and a hot chip challenge after the break. All right, KSAT did a hot chip challenge in one of GMSA's own participated in it. All right, let's take a look at how the whole team handled it. Oh, that's not good. <coughs> oh, not good. <laughs> All right. Okay. But it's starting to get really hot. <laughs> no. Oh. You got a mind over matter. To be honest with you, it's like hard to talk because like every time you talk, like, the heat from your breath makes the heat worse. I'm gonna get a hiccup. We'll just talk it out. Oh my God. You like spicy food, right? I don't like this. Do you wanna read milk facts? <laughs> <laughs> According to the US Dairy Council, milk, I'm gonna cry. Huh. Fresh can. Uh, milk helps your mouth handle capsaicin, an oily chemical compound, and chili peppers. It just gets worse, like it doesn't get better. Like it's not. Like it really feels like my mouth is on fire. Uh, my world's on fire, how about yours? Oh my gosh, this is the worst. Can I have thumb more? One, two, three, three four. four. I declare thumb more. Oh my God. I'm just feeling like if I licked a volcano and then jumped into fire, and then Cassie's canyon hit me in the face. <laughs> I'm not that bad. I'm doing okay. This is the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. How much more time is left? Ah! Okay, how long has it been? Two, one. Ah! Cheers. Thanks for not letting me do this alone. I'm good. You're a psycho. Okay, so I think John Paul's been a little machismo there, but Just a little here's bit. the thing. Okay, the challenge was to eat this Pocky hot chip and wait five minutes before you drink milk. I love spicy food. This was the spiciest thing I've ever eaten. I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Absolutely what makes do it so not do it. Spicy. It's Carolina Reaper and ghost pepper okay. powder, and it turns your mouth blue like that's like a kitschy thing. Do not do it. I'm not kidding. Do not do it. It makes people sing. Listen, okay, yes. Makes you sing. Okay, <laughs> but it was the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. The pain in the mouth lasts for like 10 minutes, but it was bad. I'm gonna let the you pain, fill in the, the pain travels. I'm gonna let you fill in the, <laughs> the blank, it's okay? It's all, it seemed like a shot you were taking at me, by the way. Matt tell people the backstory? Was because he, supposed to listen, do the challenge. There was no he, supposed to. He chickened out on me. There was no chickening oh, out. No. Asked. It would have been chickening out if I made a commitment and then backed out. You said you want to do this with me, and I was like, "No, I'm good." I, Sarah, it seems I like I made the right I'm decision. I'm glad you didn't do it, Dylan. Coot, thank you, Dylan. Dylan didn't want me to do it alone. He was really nice. Very but kind. We commiserated together. Sarah, yeah. I think you were very brave. You were. And I love your vulnerability. I applaud you. Okay. Great uh, voice in the singing. John what was Paul with the singing? Barajas. I, I think I could have been a little more honest. Mm. Spicy forecast, too. Take a look Ooh. really quickly at these high temperatures over the next five days. Seven days will be in the upper 90s with feel like temperatures near 100. Do not do the hot chip challenge. Don't do it. Have a great rest Sarah of the day. Sarah Spivey did it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Case